All right, good morning, everybody. Rub those Monday sleepies from your eyes, batten down the hatches, get ready for math lesson 61. Today, we're all about using letters to identify geometric figures. So here it says in geometry, which is the study of shapes, we often use letters to refer to points. And you can identify polygons, which are just the shapes, by the points at each vertex, which is a fancy geometric term that just means corner. So if you had this triangle here with three points labeled with an A, a B, and a C, you could call this triangle ABC, or you could call it triangle CAB, or you could even go and call it triangle BAC. Now, you would either have to write the word triangle, or you could also go and abbreviate by writing a tiny little triangle, either the word or the symbol. But if you just write BAC without identifying that you're trying to describe a triangle, then it would be wrong. Also something to know today, when naming polygons, you must follow the segments to each letter. This rectangle could not be rectangle A, C, B, D. And I'll show you here in a second why not. Because if you start at A and you have to follow the line, there's no way to get from A to C next. You could go and call this rectangle A, B, C, D, right? Or you could go and call it rectangle B, C, D, A, etc., etc., etc. You have to follow the lines if you understand what I'm trying to tell you there. So, also, when you name lines, like we're going to see on page 389 of your book, when you name lines, segments, or rays, you got to name them with two capital letters. And when you name rays, you must start with the letter that the ray starts with, then name the letter where the ray continues. If you had this line segment, you could write segment JK, or you could go and call it segment KJ. Doesn't matter. These would be interchangeable. Or if you had this line, you could call this line LM or line ML. These two endpoints would be interchangeable in the description. But here's the ray. The only way to name this ray is you got to start where the ray starts. It starts on N. And it extends out on O, only one way. This is ray and O. You could not have ray O N because N is where the ray starts. So also you can abbreviate the names for segments, lines, and rays by writing the two capital letters and drawing the figure on top of it. If you wanted to call this segment JK, you could abbreviate by writing capital J, capital K, and putting a little segment on top. If this was line LM, you could write capital L, capital M, and put a line on top. Or here, if you wanted to call this Ray NO, capital N, capital O, and draw a little picture of a ray on top. This is also all on page 389 of your book. So let's get down to it. Here it's going to say in rectangle ABCD, name the segments that are perpendicular to segment AB. So segment AB is just this part of the line right here from A to B. So we better figure out what this word perpendicular means. Do you remember? 
Does that mean it runs alongside of it and never touches? Or it does touch and make right angles? Hopefully you know that means it does touch and make right angles. So we have one perpendicular segment there. We have another perpendicular segment right there. So let's go ahead and describe them. First one, we have segment AD. So I'm just going to write capital A, capital D, and I don't want to write the word. I'm just going to put a segment symbol on top of it. We also have segment BC here. So I'm going to write a capital B and I'm going to write a capital C and I'm going to put a little segment symbol on top of that guy. Here we have in rectangle ABCD named the parallel segments in this rectangle. So I want to talk about what's parallel. So just grab one segment. I have Segment AD, what is parallel to segment AD? Well, it looks to me like segment BC here is parallel, right? So let's go ahead now and just write that down then. So we have segment AD is parallel to segment BC. So AD with a segment is parallel to segment BC. So capital B, capital C, and a segment sign on top there. But guess what? That's not the only parallel segments. How about if we have segment AB here? What's going to be parallel to segment AB? Looks to me like segment DC would also be parallel there, right? So we could also go and say segment AB is also parallel to segment DC. To segment DC, and I'll just put a little segment symbol on top. Check out this guy. We're going to have one of these every day for the remainder of the year. And they're going to start off pretty easy. They're thinkers, kind of like those two-step story problems. And basically, the best hint I can give you is every day, write it out on a piece of paper and label it. And then think, what piece sizes are they telling you? And on these guys, it's either going to end up being an adding or a subtracting problem. But just draw it out, read, and I think it's way easier if you go ahead and label. So let's read what it tells us right now. The length of segment PQ is 3 centimeters. They are saying from P to Q is three centimeters. We see that, right? That part's not so tough if you break it down sentence by sentence. And now it says the length of segment PR is eight centimeters. So from this piece, from P, all the way over to R is eight centimeters. The whole thing is 8. This little piece here is 3. The whole thing is 8. And now they're asking us what is the length of segment QR from here to here. Well, 3 plus what is going to get us 8? If you look at it that way and draw it out, it's not too tough, right? It would be 5 centimeters. A lot of times kids will read and read and read and they'll get frustrated on these. Take 5 seconds, draw it out on a piece of paper and label it and it becomes pretty easy. Check out this guy. Here it says, when naming angles, use three capital letters. 
And you're either going to have to use the word angle or an abbreviation. Make yourself a little angle symbol like this. And here's the heads up when you name angles. The letter in the middle has to be where the angle you're describing, where the vertex, where the corner is. So let's take a look here. They want us to show angle B, A, D. So A is the vertex, right? The letter in the middle. So I'm going to start with B. I'm going to go to A and then down to D. A is in the middle. So that is angle B, A, D. Let's try this one. Angle C, D, A. D is where the vertex is. So I'm going to start. Here is angle C. D is the vertex. And then on up to A. That is angle C, D, A. You couldn't call them angle D, A, C, right? You just got to follow the lines and the vertex, the corner, is what is named in the middle. So now that we know that, check this out. In quadrilateral QRST, angle QST is an acute polygon. Let's see if we can recognize this. From Q down to S and then over to T. That guy is an acute angle because he's a cute little angle. So name the other acute angle in this polygon. Well, it looks to me like this is the angle right here at R, right? So to name him, he would be angle Q R T. So that's easy enough to do. We'll just give it an angle symbol. Capital Q, capital R, and a capital T, right? That's how we name it. Not too tough. So check out this guy. If segment JK is 10 centimeters long and segment JM is half as long as segment JK, what's the perimeter of the quadrilateral? This is kind of like that other one where if you just read it, it's kind of tough. But if you take a few seconds and draw it out and label. So let's figure out segment JK is 10 centimeters long. From J to K, that's 10. They've been having us figure perimeters for a while. And then it says segment JM is half as long as segment JK. Well, we just said JK was 10. So what's half of 10? Well, that would be 5. Now, the other dangerous thing, though, when we're figuring out perimeters, sometimes people just want to go 10 plus 5, the perimeter's 15, Mr. Hines. Well, no, because on a perimeter, you have to add all sides. So if this side, JM, is 5, segment KL is 5 as well, right? And if segment JK is 10 centimeters, well, segment ML would also be 10 centimeters. So now I could go ahead and add all my sides. I have 10 plus 5 plus another 10 plus another 5 because that's how we figure out perimeter. And if you add that all up, that's going to give us 30 centimeters because the perimeter is the distance all the way around the polygon. So check out this guy. Here it's going to tell us that angle AMD is obtuse. From point A down to point M and 
over to point D, that angle. And if we're looking at the vertex, the corner, that's M. That's an acute angle, right? So it's saying, using three letters, what's another way to name this angle? I don't want to call it angle AMD again. I only have one other choice. I can call it angle DMA. I could just go the opposite direction, but the tricky part here is remembering that the vertex has to be named in the middle where the corner of the angle actually is. So here it's asking us to name one acute angle. There's actually quite a few. I see one, I see two, I see three, I see four. Holy smokes, I'm going to go for the obvious one. I'll go angle A, M, B. That's what I'll write, but you know what? You could have named angle A, M, C. He's also acute, right? You could have named angle C, M, D. He is also would have been acute. There's all kinds of acute angles here, but they only wanted us to name one of them. So let's go ahead and use our angle sign, capital A, capital M, and a capital B. That is just one of a myriad of acute angles on this diagram. Here it's asking us to name one right angle. So remember, a right angle is two rays, lines, or segments that make a 90-degree angle. To the best of my knowledge, what I'm looking at here, I think we only have one who falls under the right descriptor. And take a look. I think it's going to be angle B. M, D. I could start with B. M is my vertex, my corner in the middle, and then D. I also could have called it angle D, M, B, right? Here it says, which ray appears to be perpendicular to ray M, D? So right now, let's make sure I know which ray I'm talking about. There's ray MD, starting at M and going on forever towards D. So perpendicular means it's going to touch and form a right angle. We just got done talking about this right angle, right? So which ray is it? Is it ray BM? No way, because it starts at M and it goes on forever at B. So there's only one way to name it. You got to call this guy Ray M B. Two capital letters and a little Ray symbol on top. And that, my friends, is the end. You are definitely going to want to have your book out, maybe a scratch piece of paper for the Socrative quiz, and good luck.